Bonjour, everyone. Hi, this is Neshi Lokat. Welcome to the Spiritual Roundtable, my uh, Sunday through Thursday live stream show here right at Facebook at our main fan page for Star Nations. Um, welcome, everybody. Welcome to all of those that are in the live chat with me this afternoon. And also welcome to those that are watching it, this particular show by a recorded show, the recorded live stream. Thank you so much for making time in your day to uh, watch the, uh, the recorded show. Appreciate it. We do love our recorded shows because even we have 10 show hosts here at Star Nation's live, uh, live stream shows. <laughs> and, um, and we all use the recorded show because we like to support each other and, um, and listen to our shows. And, and sometimes we can't make it to the live stream, uh, the live show. Right, so uh, we watched the, the recorded version. So thank you so much for being here. And I'm gonna turn turn on the scrolly thing. There you go. <laughs> and so welcome, today is Monday, August 26th, August 26th. Um, and you know, it is a cloudy, cloudy day here in Tomo, Wisconsin, where I live in the northwestern part of the state, and it's cool. I mean, um, we're supposed to have a high of 73, I think. I think that's what they said. Um, but it's it's kind of uh, cloudy, and we're supposed to get some rain this afternoon. And we need the rain. We haven't had rain in quite a long time. And so my my gardens are saying they need some they some leaf need some liquid um, nutrients. And so um, I'm hoping for the rain this afternoon. Yeah, so before we get too far down the road, I'm going to share and um, like the show. Uh, I'm going to sprinkle it on over to my uh, news feed. And I invite you to do the same thing. Even if you just share it with one friend, that's really, really good. Um, and if you share it to your, your own uh, news feed, that's even better. So I'm just going to remind my friends that I am. Hmm. My quick keys aren't there. I was just checking to make sure I spelled it right. Okay. And and asking them to please join us. There we go. And I think um, I think I'm going to send it over to the closed group, the live stream shows closed group for Star Nations, just so that the peeps are reminded that I'm live streaming. And then to please join us. There we go. George. George is here with me today. He's chewing on one of his toys, and I don't think he's supposed to be chewing on the specific thing he's chewing on. Hmm. Turn down my volume on my phone. There. Here we go. Yeah, it's coming up. Oh, it's been a year. It has been a year since Paul and I decided that we were going to get another dog. We hadn't had a dog in about four years, four and a half years since Ginger walked on. And, uh, and so we had decided we were going to, to get another, another dog, another puppy. And uh, that was, uh, let's see, a year ago this weekend is when we decided that we were going to we were going to get George. We had picked him out. We had gone to go visit him and his furry mom. And uh, and he was just a little, little, little guy. And so we made the decision that we were going to um, bring him home. And so we wait, We had to wait a week. Um, or was it two weeks? No, it was a week because um, he needed to stay with his mom at least one more week. And, uh, and so it gave us time to prepare for him a little bit anyway. And so we're, we're coming up on an anniversary. Labor Day weekend is when we picked up George as a baby. Yeah. Let's see who's in the chat. Uh, Rob's here. Hey, I'm using this live stream to check the range of our Wi-Fi. Oh, good, good one, Rob. I think that's really a good thing that you're doing. It's a good choice. It's a good choice. 
And Rochelle says, I'm waiting to, to have a bone density test. Watch you later. Okay. Well, good luck, Rochelle. Let us know how it turns out. Hey, Jan's here. Hi, Jan. It's good to see you. It's good to have you in the chat. Rob is saying, um, I can hear you all the way to the end of the gravel in the North Bay parking lot. Really? That's quite a range. <laughs> that is <laughs> all right good one good rob keep us posted <laughs> christina's here hello christina good to have you here and look who's here jen's here too good morning all now see jen jen's saying good morning because she's in australia so it's actually tuesday morning by her yeah so it's always good to have you here jen yeah i think you're gonna like the cards today i'm hoping to, for a really good conversation with them um, and so for those who might just be joining us, this is the deck that we're currently using. It's called White Eagle Medicine Wheel Deck. And the author is, want, get my camera to focus. And come on. Focusing. Rats. There it goes. Nope. It's Wana, Wana Nietzsche. Wana Nietzsche. And I'm probably mispronouncing that. Wana Nietzsche. Um, and he is a, um, well, in our language, it would be a holy man, okay, um, a medicine man. Um, some would term that as a shaman, yeah. Um, and he is Lakota in Ojibwa. And so um, it's been very, very interesting to see the medicine wheel um, through his, his eyes, through his knowledge, through his wisdom. And uh, yeah, it's been, it, and it's really created some really good conversation for us, I think. Um, and so we're going to get started. I'm gonna get the first card out here. Mm, did I lose a card? No. Oh no, I think I lost a card. Rats, I'm gonna check my bag. It could be in my bag, hang on. Don't want to get it started with the wrong card. Well, isn't that something? <laughs> I think that's the first time that's ever happened. That's the first time that's ever happened. Well, all right. So, oh, no, here it is. They just stuck together. I was going to say, okay, okay, team, how are we supposed to handle that one? <laughs> okay, so here, here, wait, oops, let's turn this off so it doesn't get so distracting. Turn that off. There we go. All right, so here is the first card. It's totem pole. Totem pole. Yeah. And the words associated with this are lineage, Mythology and spirituality, lineage, mythology, and spirituality. Huh? There we go. Totem pole. You know, and for this picture, um, they actually, I'm trying to get my camera to focus. So I would really like you guys to see that. My camera is a little wonky today, I think. See if I can get it close enough and then there we go. Totem pole. And I think everybody is familiar with the totem pole. Right. And, you know, the most important um, energy on a totem pole is the, this one down at the bottom. That is the foundation. That's the, um, the strongest medicine it goes on the bottom because it has to, it has to support all of the energy above it. Right. And so I'm sure you guys have heard the, the phrase um, and it's usually meant to be uh, derogatory or demeaning. And that is to be at the bottom of the totem pole. 
meaning that you're not as um, important, right? Um, that you're last in line, so to speak. Yeah, that is probably the the most in, in, incorrect interpretation of uh, the totem pole. The totem pole, the, the, the very bottom piece is the most important because it's the foundation. It carries the energy of all of the, the, the beings above it, right? And because they think that the, the very top is usually um, an eagle or, you know, some winged, right, um, relative, that, that that relative is the most important um, when it's complete opposite. And really, when you think about it, every one of them is important for different reasons, for different reasons, right? Yeah. yeah. So how many people in the chat um, have a totem pole, whether it's an outdoor um, lawn ornament, um, that's what most people use it for, um, or if it's inside as an interior decoration, um, or for those who really understand totem poles, do you have a totem pole outside um, your, your um, usually outside your front, front yard? Because a lot of times, um, for those who really understand totem poles, the one outside, like um, your front door, um, is really all about your lineage. And it tells who you are, who you're, where you come from, your family, right? And the totem pole actually originated in the northwestern part of Turtle Island, which means that would be like Washington State, Oregon, um, and then into uh, Canada, um, British Columbia, and in that area, right, is where the most of the information about totem poles comes from because that that is one of the things that they use there. I'm just checking the chat here to see. Kimberly saying hi to me, lovely to be watching. I'm glad you're here. I am. Rob says, I lied. The one time I get seamless switching to cellular data. <laughs> Jen says, I would really love those cards. They give a great insight. We'll Google them. Yeah. Um, Let's see, the publisher, hmm, so I think it looks like it's out of Canada. It says British Library Cataloging and Publication hmm, on request. Okay, um, okay, so the publisher is a place called a Connections Ed Edition. Connections Book Publishing Limited. Connections Book Publishing Limited. Out of London. Out of London. Yeah. So, you know, you might have, uh, since you're part of the UK, right, Australia, that you might um, have that something um, closer to where you're at. They might have uh, an office there or a store there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like it too. I do. Okay. Hi, Jan. Jan says, I've often thought I'd make my own totem pole. So the info you're giving is, of course, timely for me. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Now, um, there's the traditional way of making a totem pole is to carve it out of one um, log, right? Depending on how tall you want it, you, how, the length of the log. And to carve it. So if you're if you have that as as one of your your gifts or your hobbies that you like to do wood carving, that would be like really great. Um, there's a whole ceremony that goes with it, Jan. A whole ceremony and all the preparation and when to start it. Right. Um, well, I've known and read about people that have done their own totem pole, and it's taken them like a year to do the full carving and. You know, and then also there's also the painting or the adornment on it too, right? Some totem poles are left natural looking without, um, they might have some weathering product on it to help it uh, stand the, the, the climate, right? Um, but it does take, depending on the size, it takes a while. Um, then there's others 
who um, may not have the the gift of wood carving, and what they do is they they cut out the pieces, right, and they attach them to the log. Um, whether they use you know nails or wood screws or glue, I don't know if glue would really stand up. It might, it might, depending on where you put it and how bi how big, right? That's another thing. How large? From what I understand, it's quite a journey. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, good, you're back. <laughs> Had to report his findings. Oh, my goodness. George, what are you chewing? He, he stopped. Like, you can't see what I'm doing. Oh, my goodness. I think I'll just leave him alone. I'll act like I don't see it because it's not nothing that can hurt him. All right, so totem pole. All right, let's see what the author has to say, okay? Totem pole. It says totem pole poles serve as memorials of people or special events. The totem pole challenges you to clarify your life's direction and purpose. Discover your heritage from your personal lineage and what family gifts, customs, and attitudes are worth preserving. The totem pole shows us that as humans, as two-legged, we are the bottom, not the top of the pole. The animal totems help us to reach each next level of spirituality. It says to respect your lineage and learn from the ancients. Be willing to accept the support and insights offered by partners, family, or friends. If you're a leader, try not to be a loner. It's all too easy to step off the path into egocentricity. Egocentricity. I can't say that word. <laughs> on the one hand, or into the exhaustion on the other. So the totem pole shows us or teaches us that we rely on each other, right? That we help each other. It tells our story or tells a story, I should say, right? So I was thinking about this this morning as Jan, I was, how are you gonna do this, right? I was thinking about it this morning that even if we do a drawing, of a totem pole, right? A sketch. Even though you might not be artistically inclined, you can still kind of rough one out, right? And so what would we do it on? Would you do it with your family, you know? And how that would go, you'd have, you know, who is your base? What is your base, right? Which ancestor is your base? And then you go up from there. Or we could also do it um, on, in a spiritual sense where we would have our, um, our spiritual team, right? How would, they, how would they be depicted? Maybe, you know, you'd have your, your spiritual uh, helpers on there, your totems and your power animals, right? Your angels, your spiritual teachers, what would that look like, right? Because when we talk about lineage, you know, if, if we expand that meaning, right, expand it, that yes, it's the, it's the, um, the genetic aspect of us, but it's also the spiritual aspect of us too, right? Yeah. So, you know, we, we have a long lineage in either, in either case, in either case, um, yeah, it's just interesting. It's just interesting in how how we can we can perceive what our lineage is. You know, because this is all about lineage, mythology, and spirituality. Right. You know, there's there's this myth about um, just the carving of the, the totem pole, right? 
that it's an, an exploration of yourself and all your four bodies. Hmm. You know, my parents, my dad um, made a totem pole. He didn't do the carving. He did the um, the cutting out the pieces and, and putting it together almost like a puzzle. Um, and, and he painted it. He painted it. Um, and that was in our front lawn forever. I mean, I, I think he probably made that when I was, I don't know, junior high-ish, you know, freshman year. In high school, something like that, and and he made one, and um, his was all about animals, animals, and the animals that he was connected to. Yeah, and of course, you know, he put the eagle at the top, right? Because you know, um, he he was Mexican Indian, and so their their connection to eagle is very similar to the North American uh, native, right? And that um, there's a very strong connection to them. You can see, you can see Georgie. <laughs> He's looking outside. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so here we are, you know. It, make, it makes us stop to think about clarifying where we come from, both in the sense of the two-legged here on Earth <clears throat> but it also where where did we come where did our soul come from right where where was your soul conceived was it con what planet what star um, and we can find out those kinds of things right yeah makes you kind of stop and, and think about that just for a moment Because the, the totem pole challenges us to clarify our life's direction and purpose. And so many of us, you know, um, that has that is probably the leading question, don't you think? Is um, why am I here? What's my purpose? I know that that uh, there's more to more to my life than what I'm doing. Right? Yeah. Those questions, and it seems to me that um, even those of us that understand what we're here to do, um, there's still George. Come over here and lay down, please. Come on, you're supposed to be working. Remember? Trying, trying to get him not to not to play with the pillows, um, <clears throat> and so you know we even those of us who who have an understanding of what we're here to do, our soul's purpose, um, it's it evolves, it changes, and it shifts as we grow in in our experience. That seems to shift and change. We're still doing our same this the same purpose, but it depends on what vehicle we ride in, right? It's like when I used to do almost all of my my work through my previous business, Sacred Hoop. That was my personal business, and when we started Star Nations, I still had my personal business, and as time evolved evolved, moved forward, um, I was doing less and less work through Sacred Hoop and more and more work through Star Nations. And so this became the vehicle yeah. to experience um, my life here, right, and to do my work. And so even though we understand, right, what we're here to do, it's still evolving, evolving. So if you're one of those people who says, I just don't know what I'm here to do, I'm here to tell you that even if you knew it'd still be evolving and you'd still be asking similar questions, right? Similar questions to that. Yeah. All right. Jan is saying, good questions. I look at it in the spiritual sense, including power animals, incorporating other aspects that I draw energy from. Yeah, that's good. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. You know, or, or to even to, to, um, to listen about your story, 
you know, I hope you share it with us, you know, your, your, your story as it unfolds um, to maybe take pictures or just to even, you know, to let us know what it's like, because it's, it's interesting. Jan said, our family is just connected with our firstborn sibling. Um, how relevant is this card? The, the coming together, finding home roots, family totem. Gee whiz, <laughs> this is a huge card. I know, I know. Because when I saw it, um, when I was looking at the card, it, it felt to me that we could, each one of us, as we take a look at it and take in the information from it, um, where we're talking about not just our physical family, it's that, but it's also our emotional growth, our emotional family. It's also our spiritual family, right? Our spiritual lineage, right? And, you know, even, even our educational lineage, right? whether it's your formal education through um, academic study, right? Um, who, your, who were your teachers, your mentors? Where did you go to school? Where did you get your degree? If you went to a two-year campus or uh, a technical school, it still applies, right? Or if you learned on the job, right? still applies. You still had some sort of education. Somebody had to train you, right? Who was your trainer? Who was your boss? Um, who's your informal leader? Are you the informal leader? Right? It really has us kind of pause and where, where and what is our totem pole? Yeah. And can you imagine, <laughs> this is what they just showed me is if it's a drawing, right? Um, you have the base drawing of let's say it's your spiritual, it's your power animals, it's your totems, right? That's your base, your ancestors. And then on, uh, what is that called? That really um, thin kind of paper that you can almost see through, it's opaque. And each drawing gets, gets layered on top of that, right? On top of that. And so as we, as we look at it with the different layers of the different totems, totem poles, layered over the top of each other. That is a fuller representation of, of our whole self, right? I think that's interesting. I wonder what Polly Joe would say about that with the, the chakras, because, you know, she has um, um, a belief about chakras and each chakra has a um, power animal or a totem within each one of the chakras. And so what would that look like as a totem pole? <laughs> I know, right? Well, he slept most of the morning. That That's the problem. He's got a lot of energy right now. Usually he's pretty, he's quieter because he, we've played and done that, but he slept most of the morning. Jane, uh, Jane is saying the path is ever unfolding for us. Uh, isn't that the truth? And, and I think that that's a part of us being here, right? Is that it's unfolding. And, um, and we get to, we get to um, experience that unfoldment. All right, so here's the second card. We've had this card before, Rainbow Dancer. Do you remember this one? This was just last week. Rainbow Dancer. And it is the, um, I like that term rainbow dancer we hear a lot about um about rainbow warrior right that term um but when we we consider what is a rainbow dancer and the reason why they they use a rattle to depict the rainbow dancer is because it's about rhythm it's about our unique individual rhythm and how we can, how we can um, regain our rhythm if if we got you know diverted, you know, like the nineteen eighties, <laughs> um, in all of that cultural, you know, in in the eighties it was completely different. It was so totally materialistic, wasn't it? 
you know, what kind of car do you drive? What kind of house do you have? It was big hair. It was big. Um, and as we got into the 90s, things started to shift. It was not all about me so much as it is about us, the royal we, right? that we were moving toward. And so with this particular card, the rainbow dancer is actually coming from um, the sacred feminine side of things, the grandmothers. And it says that use it to find the rattle, use it to find your personal rhythm. Rattles are more than musical instruments. Each has its own voice and its own vibration. Remember we're all spirit. All are deserving of respect as we seek to weave our rainbow people together into one tribe. In other words, you know, um, unification, right? Unity. Going back to um, the one. Yeah. But, you know, with this one, as it supports the first card, the totem, I, the feeling I had is that it really is about regaining your rhythm. In other words, it's knowing it's knowing about your own vibration and in your own frequency. Right. Where are you at with that? And to understand to get more of a feeling, not so much a mental understanding, but more of the feeling about it. The mental understanding will come in because we need that balance. But I think that this one is really about if you feel not quite yourself, whatever that means for you, right, is that perhaps you need to, to find your rhythm. And so many of us have gone through some major changes in this last few months, right? Major changes, life-changing stuff, healings that went so deep that it, you're still integrating it. Um, or maybe, you know, there was a change in a job or a career, or perhaps, you know, uh, a parent walked on or a spouse walked on. Or perhaps your children um, going to college, you know, empty nest syndrome, right? Lots of big changes. And the energy has been changing quite a bit too, right? And so sometimes it feels like if you feel a bit off, you feel like oh, something's not right today. <laughs> or I just don't feel quite right. What is that? And then we check in. Am I grounded? Right. Rochelle's not in the house, so <laughs> she didn't say she was grounded today, and I forgot to ask. How many people did their grounding this morning? Right. And if you haven't, just take a few minutes to do it now. Right. Um, before we show all three cards together. Yeah. And so this one, I think, is about finding, locating, adjusting, maybe even is a better word, our rhythm to match our, our spiritual growth. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> Thanks for that. Got to thank my, my team for that one. It's adjusting. It's adjusting our rhythm to match our spiritual growth, the wisdom that we've gained as we make that adjustment to bring that into our life on a daily basis. The application. That feels good. Yeah. Rattle. Jan says, I've never heard that about the chakras. Uh, so much food for thought. Yeah, it is. And I can't remember, honestly, I can't remember when that show was, but she actually did a show on it too. Um I tell you what, if you go to our YouTube channel, and I'll put that in the comments, okay? You can go to our YouTube channel and go to Polly Joe's playlist, right? And you'll see all of her, her videos there. 
And, um, and it was about to, um, chakras and animal totems, I think was the, the title. Had, it, it had totems in the title. So you, you won't be able to miss it. Okay. And, and I would suggest to, to watch it. Uh, because there was a lot of good information that came out of there, and those kinds of moments, those kind, that kind of information that make you go, "Oh my goodness, I never thought of it that way," or you have that aha moment, right? When you put, you connect two dots together, and you say, "Oh my goodness, that was it." Yeah. Jen, Jen is saying, "I grounded on the grass, looking at the Pal uh, Palladius star cluster. Oh, that's beautiful! Wow." Yeah, I, I got the picture in my head, Jen. Uh, Jen. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful. All right. So we have um, Rainbow Dancer, which is about adjusting your rhythm to the growth that you just gained, your soul's growth, right? You've changed your frequency. You've possibly even changed your vibration. And so now your rhythm is different. Right. And so no, sometimes you feel just a bit off. It's like, I feel good. I feel good. But, you know, it just doesn't. It, it's just not. You're not in, in, a, in a flow yet. Right. With it. It's kind of like um, um, creating new routines because something just shifted in your life. Like your mother just came to live with you. And you have to shift how you do things in your routines. Um, it's like that. It's like that. All right. So here's the third card. And I had to smile at this one. We haven't had this card yet. But it's called Medicine Wheel. Right? Medicine Wheel. Now, there's so many different ways to depict a medicine wheel from the very, very simple, which is, you know, four stones holding the four directions. So simple, right? To something that's very complicated, which is like this. Right? And I use something that's called an earth medicine wheel um, that has certain points on it for manifesting. Um, let's see if I can find it. I don't know if it's going to... I changed some stuff with my Dropbox, so it might not be in my Dropbox anymore, on my, my laptop. No, it's not. Yeah, it's... Hmm. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to upload it differently so I can show it to you. And I'll, I'll do that. I'll get it up and and maybe share it in the comments, and you guys can take a look at it. Okay. Um, in fact, for those that are members in the academy, the closed group, I did a um, a mini class on the medicine wheel, and in that video, I show the di the diagram of the earth medicine, uh, the earth medicine wheel that, that I've created. So um, if you want to see the diagram, it's in that video too. And it explains all about that particular kind of medicine wheel. Okay. So here's the medicine wheel. It's about seeing S E E I N G seeing understanding and energy, you know, and, we see it as a circle that has no beginning and no end. It's continuous, right? A continuous circle. Where the beginning and end is, is from uh, starts in the east and it goes across to the west. And when someone passes away, we say they walk on. They're really walking completely to the west. They walk completely off the wheel, right? Because this wheel is really about our physical life here on earth. It's an energetic map. It helps us to understand um, our, our lives here, right? It helps us to understand 
um, the part of our life where we're doing our life lessons and everything that we learned from it, we gained wisdom by it. What do you do with the wisdom? It shows us that, right? It's a very powerful, powerful way of organizing your life, <laughs> all of your bodies. This is what the, the author says. It says, this is a wonderful place to pray, meditate, drum, ask for healing, or enter the vision world, the medicine, the medicine wheel. This card also clarifies the changes you will need to make to become fully integrated being. It's important to remember to always look across the wheel at the opposite direction to find the qualities needed to restore balance. Because the wheel, the wheel is definitely all about balance. Just like making a drum is all about balance. Um, and so when you're on the wheel, it's a good place to be to um, come to know and understand and um, recognize what it feels like to be in each one of the directions because um, each one of them have certain qualities to them. Uh, and so when you're standing in that particular direction, sensing around you what the energy is like, right? To get to know that, what it feels like to be in that energy. And then, and then you can also stand in that particular part of the wheel, but turn your attention, your focus to across the wheel. Let's say you're standing, you're standing in the east, and you're looking west, right? Your intention, your intention is to turn your your focus, your your energy to the west. And what does the west have for you to help you find balance with your eastern qualities? Right? Yeah, because it helps kind of fill in, right? Um, to to if you're more. The East is all about air and our mental thoughts. And if you, you tend to find yourself ruminating and find, you know, staying in your mind more often, creating those scenarios, you know, um, or, or maybe, um, maybe you're a Gemini and you're just all about, you know, the intellect and the air anyway. But facing the West will help you bring in the qualities of emotion, of water, um, and so it helps to balance it out, right? It's got male energies in the east and female energies in the west. <laughs> so it's all about balance. Yeah. And so this, this wheel comes to us to support what the totem pole energy brought to us, right? And the totem pole was all about our lineage. Finding out more about ourselves in all, in all of our bodies, our lineage. And the medicine wheel energy mm -hmm. can help us to do that, can help us to do that. Um, and, and finding balance in it. Oh, Georgie, he just dropped his toy right in my lap. Um, and so you have the medicine wheel is, is also a tool, okay? It's a tool to help us to, to understand those aspects of ourselves and to help us to, to find that balance, to be in that balance. And it's also a place for respite. When we go to the center of the wheel, it's a good place to do your integration um, after a life lesson. Uh, the center of the wheel is all about the creator. It's all about the creator. It's where the creator resides. And that's where all of the energies flow into and out of, right? And so um, it's, it's a calming place. It's a peaceful place. It's a peaceful place to be. Yeah, 
Okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to show the three cards together, right? And we do know, <laughs> and I say this every show, is to is to it's going to be helpful to you to be for you to be grounded so that you can take in as much of the information that's optimal for you in a way that um, is not just comfortable, but it's pretty deep. Okay. Um, and then call your team to your, your entire, your entire spiritual team, all of them, call them to be close. They're always with you. But what you want to do is have them close to you so that they can help you to bring in the information that's coming through the cards, the essence that's um, meant for you, right? In an optimal way, in an optimal amount. So you're, you're seeing what's on the cards in the physical sense. You're seeing the, the, both the seen and unseen information, okay? And so, just a minute, George. All right, so deep breath in. And on the exhale, taking in the information from the cards. See if we can get them all showing in the same area here. If I can, eh. You don't want to cover them up. There we go. That's a little bit better. Okay. So... So we started out with the totem pole. And it was all about lineage. And it's not just our, our genetic lineage, lineage, our ancestors in that way, but it's also about our spiritual lineage. All of our lineages in all of our bodies It's knowing ourselves better, especially if, if you've been through a significant change in your life. You know, you, you went through a life lesson and um, you've done some healing work. And so your, your, your vibration or your frequency is different than it was even two weeks ago or a month ago, a year ago. Or longer. In Rainbow Dancer, Rainbow Dancer, <laughs> there it goes. Rainbow Dancer is here to help us to, to, to find our own rhythm again. Right? In this in this new frequency that you're in, this clearer vibration. You're clearer of your soul song. You're finding your new rhythm. Right? And the medicine wheel can help you in finding that balance. Finding the balance. an energetic map, a tool that can help you to navigate the energies, the energetic part of your life. To support you. Yeah. There we go. So, you know, putting it together like that makes me feel like spirit is giving us um, some information to help us with our recent growth spurt, <laughs> our, our, our recent um, vibrational growth spurt, um, that last big change that you went through due to a life lesson, right? Or... Um, and the healings that take a place around it. Um, I think they just gave us uh, a key, a key to our integration time, 
a key to understanding um, that we can help ourselves in being more comfortable in our clearer vibration in our new frequency. And perhaps, because everything's changing all the time, that is one of the constants, right, is that energy is shifting all the time, right? And so um, this will also give us a way to be able to um, weather those shifts and changes. They just gave us a tool to do that. Fine-tuned it because we've had the tools before. We've had totem poles for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Um, you know, rattles are made from a long time ago as well. Another tool. The medicine wheel is thousands of years old. All of these are tools to help us to understand and to implement when necessary. Well, I think it's very nice. How cool is that? Hey, Rochelle's back. Hello, Rochelle. <laughs> Jen is saying, your cards last week led me to do a clean, cleansing ceremony with my eldest sibling and burn letters connected to gen generational trauma. Really beautiful experience. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Jen, I'm so glad that was helpful. Very helpful. Yeah. It's good stuff, isn't it? Yeah. You, know, you you released a whole heck of a lot of stuff that that debris is because some things we just don't have to hold on to anymore, right? And look, you did that kind of healing, clearing kind of work, and today's cards are saying that we're we're at a new frequency. Many of us are vibrating much closer to our original song. And we have the opportunity to be able to um, be even more comfortable in that. And they gave us they gave us tools to do that. Yeah, you know. And if you're feeling like you're you're um, you need to find that new rhythm, right? That new flow. Why not get out your rattle for those of you that have them? And 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 do some rattling, right? You know, many, many indigenous people use the rattle much like they use a drum for that rhythm. And um, they also use it to do shamanic journey. Yeah. <laughs> Another tool. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right. I'm looking at the time. I wanted to share with you a couple of things, right? Before we do that, I want to make sure that if anything resonated with you um, through the cards and through the conversation that we had today, my suggestion is to embrace it and to watch and see, sense, feel how today's energy is unfolding for you and where this information could be helpful, right? Yeah, and if it didn't resonate, that's okay. There's always tomorrow. There's always tomorrow's cards and see what happens. Yeah, so... What we got going on this week for you um, at Star Nations is we have several shows for you this week, starting out with uh, Polly Jola Bay on Tuesday, which is uh, the 27th, right? Oops, wrong document. <laughs> Working on the magazine, too. I got the wrong document up. And there we are. All right, so... Uh, Polly Jo, I think this is going to be a really interesting topic, the show that she's got on Tuesday at noon Eastern time. The title is Circuitry of the Energy System. She's going to be talking about our blueprint of our circuitry and how the energy flows through that. Um, and I'm sure that the meditation that she's going to be doing, because she does one in almost every one of her shows, that that particular uh, meditation is going to be very helpful to some people um, that are needing some help with their energy flow, right? It's going to be interesting. I'm very interested in that blueprint information. And then on Tuesday night, God, I hope you guys can join me for this one. It's going to be such a good show. 
communications from home. My, that's my weekly um, evening show, live stream show. And I have a guest this week and her name is Mary DeLott. Mary DeLott. And Mary um, is a guardian of um, a crystal skull. And so she would like to talk to us, share with us about the crystal skull connection and it's all about peace and she's also going to be sharing with us about the crystal skull unification conference that's coming up in september so those of you that are very interested in crystal skull energy um it's going to be a really good show i she's such an interesting person um, and so we get to actually meet the crystal skull that she's the guard, uh, guardian for and this crystal skull's name is omani and um, he's all about peace. He's a uh, Nepalese Buddhist monastery ceremonial skull. And Omani came into Mary's life in 2013. And so she's going to tell us all about that. The show is on at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And that's the communications from home. Right? And on Wednesday night is Soul Connections with Polly Jolabay. So if you have any healing work that you, you would like to do, that's the perfect place to do that. The, the guided meditation that's all about healing. Um, and then the second half is the card draw. And if you enjoy getting a mini reading, um, Polly Jo is, I tell you what, she is so spot on. And it turns out to be um, usually themes that run through uh, the cards that are being drawn for the anywhere between 35 to 55 people um, almost every week. So, mm. Pretty interesting. So that's Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Thursday, Thursday, Carl and Orchard Franklin, two of our elders here at Star Nations, their show, Living in Two Worlds, is on at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And um, the title is Beyond the Beyond, Shifting Consciousness. Yeah, another good one. And let me tell you, because I produce their show, I also help them with the... Um, a hosting of it that um, they always have really good information. They, there's always some sort of nugget in there for us. Yeah. And I wanted also to share with you that, um, oh, Jen's saying something here. She says, I made a rattle of the same deer skin as my drum and it has crystals inside it. Ooh, it's pretty powerful. Pretty powerful. Yeah, putting those crystals in there. Um, you know, because it adds it adds their medicine to it, right? Their frequency, their vibration to it. Um, yeah, I have one. It's actually a gourd rattle. It's a rattle that uh, my family has had since I was, I don't know, probably five or six years old. Something like that. Yeah. And um, it's, the, it's the rattle I took apart. <laughs> and put back together. I was curious. I wanted to know how they made those rattles. What was inside of them? I found out. <laughs> and then I had to remake, re remake it, put it back together. And so I've learned how to do that with gourd rattles. And uh, when I put that one back together, Jan, yes, I put in some tiny crystals in there, just really little, little ones. Um, because if you put bigger ones in there, um, they kind of sound clunky, you know? So I use smaller ones and yeah, very good. Gosh, I haven't heard the use that rattle in a while. I should dig it back up. It's in it's in one of the, the bins in my meditation room. So I'm gonna have to dig that one up this weekend. Um, and okay, so I was gonna share with you about the magazine, Star Nations Magazine. Um, we are working on a September issue. We've been working on it for a couple of weeks already. Um, I'm at the point today where I am um, reading over for the second time the articles and getting them prepared for layout, which means which means that um, the pictures that go with them are all labeled and um, and ready to go. Sometimes I have to find photos to go with the articles. And so we're in that process of getting them all pulled together and prepared for layout. Um, and the reason why I'm telling you this is because our partners at MagCast 
Um, they do have the publishing platform restored. It's kind of like getting in the, the way back machine though. <laughs> It's 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 better than the very first version of the the platform, um, but because uh, they, they had to update it so that it would work in um, Apple and in Google. But it's uh, it's not as sophisticated as the platform that we're used to, and so um, it takes us a little bit longer to get uh, documents uploaded. So I'm hoping, I got my fingers crossed, that we're going to make our, our September 10th publishing for Apple and Google. We will make it for the Magcast version, which is the print-on-demand and the web viewer and PDF version. That will be done on September 10th. Um, but I'm just kind of letting you know that the Apple version and Google version um, may be delayed by a few days, um, but I'll let you know more about that the closer we get, okay? All right. So with that, with that, <laughs> Jen says, wow, how much knowledge it would hold. I know, right? You know how many contest dances that, uh, the rattle that I was referring to, how many, how many contest dances we danced with that? Um, hundreds, hundreds. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a dance rattle. It's not a healing rattle, but a dance rattle. Um, was. Now that the crystals are in there, it's got a different job. <laughs> All right. So with that, please enjoy the rest of your Monday, and we'll see you back here for the Spiritual Roundtable at 3 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow afternoon, Tuesday. Um, and we'll see you then, okay? So Bama Mina, that's Potawatomi 4, until we see each other again. Love you guys.